Okay, first of all, I just want to have a quick talk about my book. Uh, for those of you who have purchased it, pur purchased it I thank you very much. Um, it's 120 pages of information, nothing um, on everything to do with cuttlebone casting. So if you've done this technique or you want to learn more, um, my book is available through me directly through my Etsy site and whatnot. Uh, back here, my electro melt is almost up to temp for pouring. This is my mold. Whenever you're carving, make sure you move it in different directions so that you can see what's going on better. I'm actually doing two today, so I have a left, a left and a right. You can see on the back, I have a giant back sprue. It's going to go together like this. And you can see how nice it looks down there. Let's see if I can get it into the camera. So I've already checked these to make sure they're nice and tight. I use rubber bands followed by silver wire. The reason I use the rubber bands is because they actually compress the mold, whereas traditional binding wire doesn't really compress the pieces together. Uh, the silver wire, I use that because I want it to be um, I want this the if any overflow happens uh, two things I want the I want the elastic band not to snap and shoot silver anywhere so it's important that you bind your cuddle bone after so the silver wire will stop the, the elastics from flying although so will my cross locking tweezers I use cross locking tweezers over top of a steel sheet and that way, if anything spills, it goes right onto the steel sheet. And we should be pretty much there, yeah. So, again, I normally do this in my casting area, but because I don't have camera down there, so I'm just gonna pour it. I'm using an electro melt. There we go. Pour that in there. A little bit of a burn. Now, if it doesn't burn, it means it didn't pour in all the way. So I'm just going to set this one off to the side. I'm going to actually grab a set of I'm just going to put it into a vise here. I like to have it sticking straight up so that it Oh goodness. Oh well. I guess I'll just when you hold these, make sure you only touch them on the sides here. It gets quite warm there. So I'm going to put the other one in. Same situation. I'm turn my electro melt off now because I'm basically done. Pour the second one in. That's twisted a little bit, so I just straightened it out. Now I have a little bit of extra silver. So with that, normally I have an ingot mold up downstairs, but I don't have it. So I am going to pour it out. Put this away. Now I have, I'm gonna open this up. Always wait. Um, you don't want to open it prematurely because you can cause it to slump inside the mold if it's still molten. But uh, I don't quench. I could put the whole thing in, uh, but I don't do that. I like to be able to grab it, pull this out. So there's, there's one piece. Let's see if I can't get some light on it. Zoom in a bit. So there's the one. You can see the big back sprue. Now I will remove all of that. That'll ju that just helps increase the chances of success. Again, use the silver wire so that if I were to spill, I wouldn't contaminate my silver with steel. That's why I never use steel binding wire. Here's the other one. So now I have a left and a right. I don't, oops. I don't know what direction I'll put these in. I can also, you know, because of how I did them, 
I can put them back to back. I can make them into a pendant like horns. I can, you know, make them like this. I can hook them together. So I'll probably rubber mold these before I finish these today. But um, again, just for those of you who are interested, um, this is my book, Cuddlebone Casting with Confidence. I just finished it in last year and I'm still in the process of marketing it. Again, thank you for those people who have purchased it and I hope everybody found this video interesting.